Welcome back to Sip the Tally Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans. And today we're going to talk about our first draft prospect for the 2023 cycle. And what I'm going to be doing on this channel is a lot of receivers, a lot of positions that I think the Ravens are interested in picking guys up. And then on the other channel, I'll kind of do all the top guys and just guys floating in there and whatnot. So, Quinn Johnson, the people say he's the number one receiver in the draft. And that's why I said the people say, because I haven't had a chance to watch film on those guys yet. And what I did this year, I purposely did not watch a lot of big time football. My football on Saturday just kind of consisted of North Carolina, Miami, and a few spot games in there. You know, and I didn't even watch highlights. I watched a lot of uh, HBCU football. I didn't want to the announcers of the games to sway how I thought about a certain person. I wanted the tape to speak for itself. And so a lot of these big time guys that I'm about to do on this channel and the next channel, I'm watching for the first time other than the national championship game or the national championship semifinal and, and final. But let's get into Quinn Johnson's film and the people say he's supposed to be number one. Well, obviously he's going to be number one today because he's the first receiver I'm doing, but let's dive into it. Before we get completely into the video part of it, let's run the stats real quick. As a freshman in 2020, he had 22 catches, 487 yards, two TDs. As a sophomore, 2021, 33 catches, 612 yards, six TDs. So more production from freshman and sophomore year. His junior year, which is the season we just witnessed, 60 catches, 1,069 yards, six TDs. And at 6'4", 215, you can kind of see why, you know, TCU made the run that they did. Now, I could potentially get long-winded when talking about receivers because if you've been here with us for a while, you know I love receiver play and receiver talk. Uh, let's get started before <laughs> this turns into a super long video. That's Quinn at the bottom, and I'm going to point out the good and the bad of each play. I'm going to let it run first and then talk about it. On this play right here is simply the concentration because that should have been a pick and the fact that he you know caught it off the tip. And it's not one of those tips where – the ball goes go straight into the air and you got time to, you know, kind of find it and go get it. This is almost one of those line drive balls that we see a lot of people drop because the traje trajectory gets changed at the last minute. But he locked in on it. Hand-eye coordination. Tip, caught. Because actually, if you look at it, he's going back to make the tackle because it should be pick six. And then he realizes, oh, he dropped, he didn't catch it. So his, his hand-eye coordination kicked in. Because he was going back to tackle that guy. Right, he wasn't coming back for that football. And he may say he was, but, you know, if you know football, that wasn't what was going on. Let's go to the next play because we got a bunch. Top of your screen. And for the most part, when they go in this direction, he hit the top of your screen. And when they go in the other direction, he hit the bottom. Yeah, he's in the slot a couple times. Not a bad route, but the receiver really wouldn't look at him. But this is what he could do at 6'4". He can make guys miss at 6'4", which is, is kind of crazy. And granted, he didn't like shake him out of his shoes. That's just the beginning of it. You'll see more in this video. See him in the slot right here. And they give him, look at the cushion that he got from this guy. Like, that. this is candy from a baby. <laughs> this, that's too much room for him. But he catches it. You always have to catch again. Makes him miss. Now, okay, my speed going to kick in. I'm going to outrun three. Then, let, then they, you know, the cavalry kind of caught up to him. But still, he pulled number three another 15, 20 yards. At 6'4", 215, you can do that. Bottom of the screen here. Very bottom. Little hitch route. But again, making guys miss. That's what I love about him. The ability to make guys miss at that size. That's that's a that's a I ain't gonna say a rare trait, but there's a trait that is becoming increasingly needed in the NFL. The ability to make guys miss. Because a lot of teams, when you have a good receiver, they play you to let you catch it and just tackle you. So they'll give you a lot of underneath stuff. So you gotta be able to take a hitch and make guys miss and do that. He obviously has that ability to do that at 6'4". 
versus uh, SMU. I think no, this Kansas versus Kansas again. Now, what I don't like about this one is it's a fade ball. Get outside the guy. Get outside the guy. Give him something right here. Something right here to, to make him think you're going there. And once he opened them hips to you, stick that foot in the ground and get back outside. That would be ideal. But he just tries to shoot past, man. It's covered too. And so uh, Dugan or Doug, however you say the quarterback's name, it wasn't really a great ball anyway, but the fact that he went inside instead of out, don't help it out. Don't help it out about, at all. Because if he were out here, It'd be different. If he was out in this area, it'd be different. But the fact that he's inside, that gives that safety who's right there a chance to, you know, get in and help on the play. Yeah, I'm pounding that mouse too. I hear it already. But let's go to his next. You just got to stay outside on the nine routes. You you got enough wiggle to, to make people miss. I mean, not to make people miss, but to, to give some misdirection in your routes. Now, he, he is a hard planner. Uh, if you follow the channel and on, on the other channel, I talked about Christian Watson yesterday. Christian Watson changes directions subtle. He don't, he, don't, he don't have a lot of stab in it. He can he light on his foot when he changes directions. Whereas um, Quentin here is a little like a traditional football. Uh, uh, stick that foot in the ground real hard and cut guy. That's, that's what he is. Nothing wrong with it. Just different styles. Bottom of the screen again. Well, on this, and again, if you've been here for a while, you know why this is on here. This is Quentin here. I love guys that don't mind blocking. I'm a firm believer, a firm believer of no block, no rock. I love guys that don't mind blocking. He know he's not getting this ball. Comes off. Realizes it, sees the ball thrown now, and he's just gonna block his guy. He don't just let him off or, or none of that stuff, or he, you know, he just stay with him. Just stay with him. And eventually the guy try almost gets outside of it. He does it in the run game too. I didn't put a lot of run game stuff on there because I know everybody wants to see him catch the ball and run routes. But he don't mind blocking in the run game too. And three by one, you can take him and throw little bubble screens out there to him. And again, at that size, the ability to make people miss. See that? Now, he ain't get much afterwards, but the ability to make a miss and a big guy, you can do that. You can you that's that's <laughs> this little guy stuff in a big guy package. You can mess around and throw a tight end out there and put him on the backside, and, and now you got a mismatch. You got a tight end blocking DBs. Let's go the other way. If I'm not mistaken, this might be a touchdown from the slot. From the slot fade. And they're they're obviously in some kind of man pressure, because look how they lined up. Head, head up, head up. So they, you know, it's and everybody else in the box. But maybe it's a short yardage situation. Maybe. I don't remember the down the distance. But I, they got him in man, and he just running the slot fade on him. And he don't, it's not a lot of separation, but he's 6'4". Mm. Not a bad ball either. But he's 6'4", can do that. At the last minute, and it's hard to see on this view, but when I'll show you the backside view, Watch the subtle movement, realizing the ball is further over his shoulder to the right than he than he plans for, and watch him adjust to it. And I'm gonna see if I can stop it right before it happens, then let you see it happen. Ball's in the air. All right, you see where he is right here now? He's over. We're over here. This is where we at, people. And watch this. I'm gonna see if I can slow it down real and watch the subtlety. See how, how far he had to stretch out to get that? Because it's a little further than he planned on it being. Or, or he slowed down so he can use his body to shield off the defender. One of the two. I don't know the thinking on it, but there's one of those two things happening right here. Because at the last minute, he just reaches out with his length and gets it. And gets his feet in. Hey, <laughs> at 6'4", 215, you can do that. And, it, you know, we know he, he can go up and get jump balls, or at least he should be able to go, get, go up and get jump balls at that height. But still, to be able to toe drag swag and do all that. Now, this game versus Michigan is one of the games I saw, like live. And I was, you know, 
I remember at one point in time, I was like, this is the number one receiver. And he, not, he can't even get off versus Michigan. And no sooner than I could get that thought out, he started to turn it on. This they got a cat blitz and Bosch probably should have came out right now, but it didn't. Again, I really would love to see him score this. Make him miss and score this thing. Make him miss and score that thing. That's a safety. He had no business tackling you one on one in that much open field. No business. Give him a little, uh-uh, and get on in the end zone. Again, it versus Michigan. I think Michigan's going to, we're going to run this out with Michigan. At the bottom of your screen. Again, that little, that little jump stop on this DB. This DB was kind of getting fits. Whoever number five is for Michigan. This DB kind of, well, held, held his own versus Johnson. He ain't just, you know, just, just go bananas. Number five held his own. Early in the game, he ran a little in cut or out. I can't remember. Five almost picked it. A couple other times, five jammed him up at the line. So five, five ain't no slouch. I don't know who he is yet, though. Who's number five for Michigan? Put it in the comment section. Now at the bottom of the screen versus five again. You just got to use the speed. TCU, he bailed. He's going to work his way all the way across the field. Oh, no, this is the good route. This is the good route run I put on here. My bad. I had the wrong. The, I was a play ahead. Watch this route. He almost going to post curl him, then turn it into a comeback. Vertical, vertical post. Uh-uh. <clears throat> comeback. Right, he didn't catch it. That's a hell of a route, though. And that, that ain't him not catching that on him. That's a bad throw. One more time. Post. Uh-uh. Sit down and work back. It's doing a good route. Again, there are multiple in- instances of him running decent routes, but they didn't ask him to run a lot of routes either. He ran the, the bubble screen a lot. He ran post. He ran goals. Uh, and ran some in some in cuts, some digs. It wasn't a lot of those. A lot of quick stuff to give him the ball and let him do his thing. They really relied on him a lot using his jack. In the slot right here. Now, this is the play they're going to work him all the way across the field. And that's just too much space to give him. Too much space. One-on-one with the safety, he just going to cross his face. And Duke going to throw it to the grass. Throw it to the grass. He used his frame to catch it. That's just that's too easy. Too easy. But this is the play right here that really caught my eye. And this is kind of when I said, you know, he's the number one receiver. He ain't really showed me nothing. About two minutes later, this play happened. And when I say spray, he got out. It's a three. It's a two yard throw. Hey, that, little hezzy, that, little, that move right there was what really opened my eyes. This little hezzy. Because he got the angle. Ah, and then turned it on. And I was like, oh. I was looking like that meme with the, with the mouth wide open at this point. Like, yeah, he potentially could be that. Potentially could be that. But again, they say he's the number one receiver. He's the number one. He's going to be the number one receiver on my board right now because he's the first one I done. But this is a good bar, though. He he said the bar, you know, up there. So we're going to look at some other guys and see what's going on. There's a lot of names out there. You can kind of throw some names in the comment section, you know, that you think can compete with with uh, Quentin. And then we'll go from there. But we're going to see a lot of receivers on this channel, uh, some DBs and a few other positions in there. But this is the first of many of receivers on this channel. So um, if you like what you saw, like the video, uh, drop your comments down in the comment section. Y'all know I try to get back as fast as possible with those comments. Even if I'm a day or two late, I try to re- respond to to questions that are asked unless you're just making a statement. But I appreciate everybody for coming through. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me for about 15, 20 minutes. And I told you I get long winded with receivers, but I love receiver play uh, receiver coach for a long time. I just I, I love the position. Love it. Love everything about it. But uh, see you guys soon, man. It's first one, Quint Johnson, TCU, um, 6'4", 215. And uh, we'll see y'all soon, man. Peace, peace, peace. Go over to more Sip the Talent for more draft videos, too. There's some over there already. It's about five. Well, I forgot the most important thing, the scores. For hands, I have them at a 76. Routes, 70. IQ, 71. Game speed, 78. Yak, 70, with a total average of 73 out of 80, which puts him at the top of my list so far. That's going to change, or it's probably going to change, depending on who comes up and whatnot. But right now, he's the number one on the list. Not saying he's my best prospect, but he's the highest as far as the little scale that I've put together. 
So I appreciate you guys for tuning in. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. And again, Quentin Johnson sits atop my board so far with the score of 73 out of 80. Peace. With the, with the